voice a, a, a strongly in favor of the board hopefully making a favorable recommendation that Prospect Court be accepted as a uh, as a public way into the Northampton Street system. Um, for all the reasons that were uh, clearly enumerated to the board when it made a uh, on-site visit uh, on the street several weeks ago, so I won't bore you with all of those reasons, but I just wanted to express my uh, my uh, strong hope that the board votes favorably with regard to prospect. Okay, um, so we will. Actually, sorry, can I interrupt? Yes. So, do we wait for our topic to speak, or do we're I just think we're that's, supposed to do that's all right with me? Okay. Um, we have a couple of administrative things to take care of, and then we'll get into the private ways. Um, first order of business are approving the minutes from the June fifteenth meeting. Second. Any comments or thoughts? I don't remember seeing that. Was that was the private way meeting? Yeah. Oh, oh the here. Saturday meeting? Yeah. yeah. That, that was the regular minutes. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. Yeah. I, I didn't review them. Okay. Willing to stick your necks out and approve the minutes as presented? Okay, so all in favor of approving the minutes as presented. Aye. Aye. All right. uh, next, Nicole's going to talk to us about authorization to acquire three parcels of land uh, and to seek funding under the Drinking Water Supply Protection Grant Program. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, I'm here tonight to get the board's formal authorization to acquire three separate parcels of land, um, which we spoke about in the executive session. Um, they're located in Conway. Also here to ask for formal authorization to apply for three separate grants, one for each of those parcels, under the Drinking Water Supply uh, Land Grant Program with the state, and then also to apply Kest through Kestrel um, Land Trust. They would take the lead on applying for a grant um, through the Open Space Institute. The Open Space Institute grant would cover 20% reimbursement costs, and the state grant So, authorization to acquire three parcels went. So, have we reached an agreement with the three property owners? No, we're still in um, one. One is pretty close to a purchase and sales agreement, and then the other two is it's still under negotiation. So, you're really just looking to, uh, for permission to apply for funding? Uh, yes. It's required in the grant that they have board approval. Oh. And the three parcels we already previously discussed in the executive session and authorized you to send a purchase. Yes, okay. exactly. We just haven't finalized that yet. I make a motion that we um, support the application for funding for the three parcels uh, in, that we have previously authorized staff to enter into applications <coughs> with for the purpose of uh, oh, I was say water supply. Water supply Second. All in favor of giving the call or the staff uh, authorization to enter into final acquisition? Okay, we are, will it come before us one last time for the buy sell? It will. Okay. So primarily we're giving you authorization to continue the process and to initiate applications for the grant money. Yes. Okay. All, All right. in favor of that. All, All right. right. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sam yep. Crescione? He's on the He can't hear. It's just here. Are you Sam? You have to do it. Come on in, Sam. I understand you'd like to talk to us about Drury Lane. I got a hearing aid, so yeah, he didn't they, hear you. they kick off and I. All right. <laughs> Hi, I understand you'd like to talk to us about your street. Right, Drury Lane is uh, completely gone. Okay. And I have all pictures to show you. Uh, there's a well.
bell that comes out in the center of the room. And uh, one of my wells has already been contaminated. It cost me $2,000 to put the salt thing into it. But it's I got three other wells on Drury Lane. <coughs> and uh, I'm there since 55. And the only section of the road that's stabilized was when they put the bridge in when the state did that section. Would you, um, just for my own, could you remind me where it is? I can't. It's off of Loudville Road. It's the Clear Falls Swimming Hole oh. swimming area. That's Drury Lane. We Runs over the, to Loudville uh, Road in East Hampton. And is it the new bridge there? The with new the, bridge that was The swimming building. hole underneath? Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. We, we built that in 65. And then we did the dam. And we had swimming all the way up to 2000. Okay. And then it just got out of... Couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. That's a great place. Yeah. I'm trying to get the dam taken down, but they want to historical study, fish study, water study, it would cause me, it would bankrupt me just for the studies. I could take the dam down with eight or ten thousand dollars. It's just a small four foot dam that's left. So is Drury Lane the road that comes into It goes between East Hampton and North Hampton. work at night because starting 11 o'clock at night they bypass going all around and really? they cut through there. So let me ask the staff to uh, give us some more information. Sure, I've discussed with, with Sam quite frequently about the road out there and basically there's not much pavement left on the hillside because um, it's all ledge out there and the actual groundwater comes out underneath the roadway and keep, keeps popping the pavement off. So right now there's a stretch that's basically all gravel out there now. I've told Sam that we'll be out there with something with the push box trying to reestablish what we can out there. Um, according to DHB pavement management, it's about $120,000 to reclaim and fix the road. However, it needs drainage work. We need to blast, get through the ledge, and create a drainage diversion issue first. But, um, so the road is in deem, you know, probably a good quarter million dollars worth of work to be done in this section, but uh, we're trying to do some immediate pavement work to take care of it. And hopefully, the last five years, seven years, we'll be back there again. The water just comes up right underneath and just pushes the pavement out. Especially the past a, few years with all the. There's a, uh, there's a uh, what do you call it? A tourist trail for hiking that they put in there. Winter, and if you, I'm going to leave you these pictures. Okay. The holes will be four feet wide and a foot deep. Very dangerous. So even if somebody got hurt or killed, it's negligence on the city for leaving it in that condition. Because all during January, February, and March, the holes are left there. Right now, there's at least 80 to 100 potholes from six feet, I mean, uh, six inches to 16 inches. And uh, what the city does, when they have a, a yard of blacktop, they got to get rid of it. They come up and they patch for the hole. <laughs> so it's like the dumping grounds, you know. But the thing of it is, 
It's a very dangerous street. And it's, it is a road that's being used between East Hampton and North Hampton. So it, there must be something on the books about roads that go between two cities. So can you look? We've looked at it, and yeah. what we're going to be doing, like I said, is coming out with our push box and try to reestablish as best we can the area that's basically gone. It's basically a gravel road now, and try to reestablish that. And you think that might be in the next couple of months? Oh, will be. It'll be during the summer. That was the goal. Talked to my highway oh, yeah, superintendent. You, you can, the thing of it is, it can be patched so you, like they've been doing all the 30 right. years that I'm there. But what's happening now is because of this well coming up. Every winter, all the blacktop's right. going to go. I got all pictures of piles of blacktop all along the road that I rake because the bottom of my car is completely demolished. Right. Well, it, it sounds to me like for the moment we'll have to just wait and see if these patches help. The oh yeah, they, they will help. It's it's what you're going to plan to do to uh, do something with the road because if my other well goes, it's. It's a health hazard for the tenants. My tenants, you know, their teachers and their little kids, okay. they got to get out in the winter and it's it's like they're abandoned. So, All right. Yeah. So leave us the pictures. I'm going to leave they're, you the pictures. The staff's going to go and... I, I just wrote a little summary on what they are. Okay. And you just got plenty of time to review it. it it's nothing you can do right away anyway. That's what it sounds like. No. no. And do you want the pictures back? Well, yeah. Okay. Or you so can, can we we'll mail scan them? them? We'll scan them and, and mail you, them back. You can hang on to them, yeah, whatever you want to do. Okay. But it'll, I think it'll help to show why we're doing this. That's all right. available if you ever need any information. Okay. Because we died in, the, in, the, in 65, I dynamited the river, built the dam, engineered it, recorded it, and now I can't do anything. i got to get a big engineer to do anything. Right. And in them days, you could do anything. So we just couldn't fix the road that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll uh, scan these and mail them back to you. We'll mail these back to you. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Sam. We'll talk soon. I got one here. Oh, okay. I gotta make. Somebody's gotta make dinner. All right. I should just tell you, we keep looking at our phones. We're looking at the maps. So we can remember, like, long after. Oh, yeah, right, got it. Or the next thing it has to come All right. And then we have one last thing. Um, next for consideration is a drainage system connection fee adjustment. So um, we have a um, fee for connecting to the drain system of $500. And um, we also have, have a program to remove inflow into the sewer system. <coughs> you have clean water going into the sewer system from many different places. So we have people every year that know that they have a connection in some pumps, putting drains going into the sewer system, putting clean water into there. They'd like to make a change and put it in the drain system, but one of the barriers is a fee of $500 to connect to that system. So um, I'm proposing in a motion to um, waive that fee in a situation where someone wants to do, do the right thing and remove that clean water going into the sewer system and connect to the drain system. So there's, um, right now it's just a set fee. And um, honestly, we get 
people asking me this question, they hear about the fee, they hear about the details of how to connect, and nine times out of ten, I don't hear back from them. And they keep clean water going in, into the sewer system. So this is just a small um, you know, step in giving incentive to uh, connecting, putting clean water in the drain system instead of the sewer system. To make a motion that we offer up a waiver of the drainage system connection fee, where in instances where it clearly demonstrates that we are diverting clean water out of the sewer collection system and into the storm drainage system. Second. Does a does the current five hundred dollar fee cover certain city costs like? Inspection. Uh, it's really ins administrative inspection. Um, Who's responsible review. for pavement repair if they have to? They are. They are. Okay. They are. It's it's nothing physical that okay. that five hundred dollars pays for. It's it's inspection and administrative costs. Okay. So the cost of actually doing the transfer is something that the city is not responsible for. No. It's it, if someone wants to connect the drain system or make that change, the cost is entirely there. Okay. Yeah, right. And so the five hundred dollar fee is on top of that. <coughs> so we just remove that barrier. Yeah. Right. Now um, so Doug and I talked about this earlier today, just kind of going over what's on the agenda. Um, I I feel so let's say you were building a house, you have a footing drain and because of the the nature of the topography, really, it'd be great if you could run the footing drains into the stormwater drains. So that's where the $500 comes in. If we have the capacity in the street, we will allow it. So I said, so we're going to amend our policy. Well, we don't have a policy. We have a fee for this. But it's institutional knowledge that you can do it, or who you would talk to about it, or how well, that might go. It's a permit. They right. get a connection permit. But there's nowhere where someone can click on the web and say, footing drains. Oh, yeah. There's a program. Here this, here's, this, here's, here's the way it works. This is what I can do. This is what it will cost me. And Oh, and look, if I have my current drains going into the sewer, I get a fee waiver. I, I think we should start putting that stuff on the web. And my point is that I was saying to Doug, so we're going to touch this, you know. He's, he's taking the trouble to write some stuff. I think every time we touch something, we should finish it. Get the first part written, get it into a situation where we, we have a document describing this little piece of our overall program. Does that seem worthwhile? That's yeah, nothing. I think anything we can do to enhance customer service and make it easier for our customers to know what's going on is a good idea. So if I pursue this a little bit, does this sound like... Yeah. yeah. You're not proposing to change current practice, just to document it so it's easier to understand. Yeah. I, you know, I was saying to Doug earlier today, you know that I, ISO 9000 certification companies got? A friend of mine went through the whole process. It turns out the entire process is documenting what you've got. It's a documentation program. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'd like to start. Okay, so we'll work on that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I, can I also make some other comment, though? It seems like we had the hearing the other night about the stormwater management and trying to manage the flows that come through the stormwater system. <laughs> so I'm curious if we might entertain a way to incentivize people to take it out of the sewer system, do something that's a, you know, a, one of the, uh, some sort of impact so they can manage it more on site so it doesn't end up as part of our stormwater flow that then we're charging people, or we have been talking about charging people a new fee to manage that. That could be a potential offsetting credit if that's part of the program. Could be if they're doing something on site. As part of the connection permit process, we asked them, have you looked at keeping the water on site using X, Y, and Z? Yeah. And, 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 and so I, we... I, I, in my mind, you know, to, to go from a fee of $500 to nothing, just to incentivize
utilize them to get it out of the sewer system. I understand that, but is there a way to um, temper that discount so that they're more incentivized to manage it on site rather than put it in the stormwater system? That would be the question. Well, the way you would do that is you would you would, you'd step up. Um, but you would still go through the permitting process to make yeah. sure that, so it's just a waiver. Of it's the a waiver, of the, okay. Okay, but the, all, all the steps that have to go through okay. are still there. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion to authorize <coughs> this change so that if someone were to take a drain that's currently going into the sewer system and switch it over to the stormwater system, we would waive the connection fee in that specific situation. Well, actually, Doug and I talked about this, so probably it would probably involve a house visit. Well, it, so it, it would be an educational moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure there's not people lining up to make this switch over, but I think it just it happens a few times here. Um, yeah. But when it does happen. And before we move on, you, you mentioned that um, you do get requests for information about this, and I'm, sh I'm sure that's not everybody who'd be impacted by it, but just as a sort of a measure of order of magnitude, are we talking like? Two a year or twenty a year. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's it's, it's not, not gonna break the bank. No. Okay. So all in favor of approving this change. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Okay, now the good stuff. Uh, discussion um, about Lawn Avenue and the item on the table is should we recommend that the city council accept Lawn Avenue as a city street? Everyone remember Long Avenue is the dirt road along the stream up the prospect. Mm -hmm. For the title question. The title, title question came back. The city never did own the property. We have, I got some information late this afternoon from Alan Sewell's mm -hmm. office in Amherst, and their title search shows that the city never owned the land. Did we own the farm next to Jason? We did own the farm adjacent. In fact, one of the houses we researched, I believe, was number eight, Long Avenue. Their back parcel was part of the city land. So, city land was adjacent to it, but wasn't part of Long Avenue. It didn't front on Long Avenue. It did not. From my understanding, also, I spoke to Mr. Sewell. Would you introduce yourself? Yeah, oh, hi. My name is Joe Curran. I'm from Long Avenue, and we spoke about this title. It was, it was never clear that the property owners, though, had a title to this land either. I think there were just some, there was some confusion with. And something when everything was split up, or how, you know, who had title to it. But if you look on all of our titles, and a lot of people from Long have are here, we did look and we checked back. We don't own it either. <laughs> but what's happened? So we don't really know how, how. You know, there's probably no clear answer about who actually owns that the stretch of dirt that rode through there. But we, in fact, I was prepared to make a argument in saying that you do own it by default. But in fact, there's a statute that was passed in the '70s that says. In these instances, when it's not clear who owns it, automatically the property owners on each side own half of it. Yeah. So, right. um, no. Who right. owns the stream? Do you know? <laughs> the stream? Yeah. Um, it runs through my yard, through my backyard. It goes into my yard. Actually, the entire stream is on my property. Um, but I wouldn't say I own it. That's another issue we won't get into today. With, apparently, we have beaver issues, but I just was informed that dynamite is sometimes a solution. So, <laughs> so don't forget that Lawn Avenue has a city sewer system in it and a water system in it also. It doesn't have any drainage utilities, but it does have water and sewer. And as far as I know, we definitely have an easement for the sewer line, and I'm pretty sure I haven't found it, but an easement for the water line. And there's a pirate hydrant. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Can you for, for someone to look at. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David. So, I just wanted to note that part of the street is a dirt road. Both ends of the road. Well, the end that's paved is a driveway. It's a driveway. I think it's yeah, all dirt. 
It's all there. The only thing that's paved is yeah. my driveway. Prospect Street and Mr. Curran's driveway. Yeah. Oh, okay, I remember. coming off. I wish. No. <laughs> so we have a lot of representatives. I think most of the people here are. So we have. And I, I might just mention if I could that we also have this little informal statement that says we the other sign residents of Long Avenue are in support of public works to vote to make Long Avenue a public way. So the city will continue to plow and maintain as they have been doing it. These are folks who were unable to come to the meeting because they had work schedules that wouldn't allow them to come. Actually, one gentleman who thought he couldn't come is here, so he's. Let's see. So your question was answered. Yes. Any other thoughts, comments? How's it do on the matrix? Well, the matrix, uh, it doesn't do well in the matrix, but I must add that after having been to um, multiple public hearings, 40 plus streets, um, I'm not sure that the matrix is serving us that well. And um, in light of at least where I think um, my view on all of this is heading, I look at Lawn Avenue and I see that it's, it's got the right width, it has um, quite a few residents on it. Um, it is dirt, um, but we have dirt streets in the city. So I'd be prepared to make a motion um, that it be uh, considered a uh, public way. That we recommend the yeah. city council. Yeah. And if I saw a head twitch. So um, I move <coughs> that the board has evaluated Lawn Avenue and we feel that this private way could be a successful candidate for formal acceptance as a public city street. Therefore, we encourage residents of Lawn Avenue to submit a petition. Oh, that's that's an old. That's been oh, that done. That's <coughs> yeah, it's only the okay. top. It's only the that first sentence is all we need. Then, basically, we are uh, you're moving that we recommend um, to the city council that they accept Lawn Avenue as a city. Right. So moved. I'll second that. Uh, further discussion. So, all in favor of voting to recommend that the city council accept Lawn Avenue. Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? No's? Well, I was there. So I okay, so Lawn Avenue, we will recommend that the City Council accept Lawn Avenue. So here's the process. And, and this would be true for the other streets as well. Um, the City Solicitor has told us that in a situation like this, where we have voted to recommend that the City Council accept the street, we must then go ahead and get the survey done, get the legal work done, and take a package of everything to the city council. Presumably, as I think I've explained to you, we assume they would accept it at that point. Uh, but there isn't a mechanism for them to accept it provisionally pending receipt of the plot plan and the legal work. That has to precede their vote. Um, at this point, you're fair ways down the list. We've looked at a good 20 streets probably ahead of Long Avenue. And we don't have enough money at this point, not enough money has been appropriated by the city council to do all of the survey work and the legal work. Um, and even if it had been, it would still be some months before we would get to your street. So the next step, it could be months and months before winter. Presumably, if we have moved this far on a street, we're just going to keep plowing. So I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. That's that's everyone's assumption. Okay. Anything we need to do at this point? But just don't ex don't expect um, you know surveyors on the street next Monday. I can hope. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Uh, okay, next though, we're going to discuss uh, potential for recommending that the law be accepted. Carrie, can I uh, yes, move sorry. that we uh, 
see who's here and go out of order if we're not, sure. if we've got, you don't have anybody here for a while. Yet. So uh, we have uh, Tyler Court, no. Prospect Court, and Prospect, no, there's a Tyler over there. We've got a Tyler. Uh, well, Prospect Court, you're up. Um, I need to look now and see which one's Prospect. I remember which one that one was. It's between State Street and Prospect Street. Remember we're going through the housing authorities yeah, line, coming yeah. in the back way? Yeah. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the parking lot at the end of it. Yeah. Quaint yeah. Little Street. Yeah. yeah. It is. One of my notations yeah. one of my notations from this particular one is that it may be one of the cases where the paperwork got lost in the process back in the back in the battle days. Um, so, uh, with, yeah. um, with that thought in mind, I'd be willing to support a motion to recommend, provided that they're willing to take down the private drive signs that exist at both ends of the street. Uh, <laughs> Is that a motion? Um, yeah, the motion we you move that we. I'll make a motion that the city council recommend that uh, they that we recommend that the city council accept Prospect Court as a uh, as a city street. I'll second that. Yep. Ned, do you have any uh, comment or thoughts? No. Any other? Okay. All in favor of voting to recommend that the city council should accept Prospect Court. Aye. 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 So, did you get that BJ row yeah. stand? Okay, great. Uh, next for your consideration, um, Thank Tyler you Court. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thanks, you Thanks for coming. Tyler Court's adjacent to Smith College, little, little uh, street. Oh, with the garden up at the end. Exactly. Yes. by people from adjacent neighborhoods in the formal and the cut through on the beer place. place. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for we're fishing around for a, um, a motion here. Can I just make my comment that I'm not sure on the record about this? Yeah, please I'm introduce yourself. Tyler Court and have strong feelings. About well, please introduce yourself. Mickey Miller. 19 Tyler Court. Um, we feel strongly that in 2005, when we bought this wonderful home, had we known that the service would be taken away, wow, we'd have had second thoughts about buying the home. And I think it's an unfair uh, uh, act to take that service away from any of the homes, the three homes and families that use that street. And we've all been under the assumption that it was a public right of way. That's the way it's been used. Um, and uh, finally, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding the criteria that's being used, because I've never seen a written document that shows what you all are using as a checklist. And that, you know, as long as it's being done equitably, there's, you know, it's going to be hard to, you know, argue it. But I'm concerned I haven't seen or read, and I've been asking about, you know, the criteria. So, but listening the way things are going tonight, <laughs> I, there's a side of me that just wants to sit back and let you guys vote because I sense that you're not trying to shut down and stop services for we taxpayers, and that's what I hope. How many residences are there on the island? Good question. There are four addresses, but one of them actually fronts prospects. So. I think you could argue number three.
pre-Tyler Court, although the mailing address is Tyler Court. So if you count that one, there are four. And I also found it interesting that um, it didn't seem important that a doctor li lives at the end of the street. I think the citizens would want their doctor, who I believe runs Cooley Dick's emergency room, I think the citizens of citizens Northampton want him to get in his car and be able to get to the hospital. At least in an emergency. Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and doctors also want the good parking spots when they get there. Sure. Well, they should have them. They save lives. My daughter's a nurse. She does not get that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I get one last thing I'm going to say is, you know, we pay a lot in taxes. Over $8,000 a year. And the idea that plowing would stop on the street is, wow, hard to believe. Okay, that's it. Thank you. So I'm still looking for a motion. I'm sorry, I was absent during the visit, so I don't feel like I'm in a position to make a motion. I'm okay. Guys. More good. I didn't think it was the narrowest street. It is a dead end street. It dead ends right into somebody's garage, as I recall. The doctor's. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I hardly know. It, it, uh, to me, it falls into the criteria of a common driveway. Um, but the pedestrian movement through there was kind of interesting. Um, it is narrow. Has off street parking. It does have off street parking, yeah. Probably not the hardest street to plow. Well, the, using the criteria that we started with, this, in my mind, this would have never made it as a public way. Um, and it, it's clear that we're relaxing the criteria. As we go forward, I am I am concerned that um, what we decide on uh, Tyler Court may then um, affect some of the decisions that we've already made on one-lane streets that carry two-way traffic. And I'm not I, I haven't really thought through how whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. All right, so let me ask you this. Would it make sense to put it in the pile with the uh, the nose and re the ones we're going to re-look re at? I'd rather just table it and reconsider it, but not take a, not take a position now and, and consider it when we reconsider some of the others. Let me explain this to me. The, um, it's become clear that like everything else, and anything else, if you look at enough instances instances of something, you start realizing that maybe you were too strict in the beginning. It's the age-old thing. If you're on a job interview, do you want to be the last one, the first one? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Uh, we realize that the, some of our early no's certainly bear another look as we've moved through this process and now look at a few dozen streets. Um, So we're, we're discussing just moving your street into that category. Am I correct that there are 40 streets in question? Approximately, yeah. At 17000 a year? To plow them. Which is $450 a street. It's nothing. The Solicitor it's, General has told us. And three people on this, three families on the street, we're talking $100 and some dollars a year. So I don't really understand why we're going through the process we are, because if it's not a budget issue, the Solicitor General has told municipalities they must cease That plowing. I understand, but I'm saying if the decision can simply be made by saying, we the city are going to do this, we can afford it, it's in the budget. It'll cost about $5,000 to do the survey and legal work. Sure. Um, so there's the expense, and we're trying to have a process that makes sense. Well, then I think as far as the expense to get the survey and the legal work, um, I think we should have the chance to say we'd be willing maybe to chip in as owners of the homes on the streets to get that accomplished. 
Because again, it really gets down to the service. I'm serious. Uh, okay, yeah. well, so, David? I was just going to say that the legislation specifies that if, we're, if we do, we, the community, want to continue plowing and paying for it, it has to be voted you know, by an elected referendum or electoral process. And so that's questionable if, if the voters would pay for it. Oh, I thought that it was either the vote, a referendum and the voters decide, or Correct. the city could just adopt it as a street. Correct. Am I correct? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I don't understand why. Well, let, let, let us work on the process. The, the other concern I have is that um, as we establish standards for private ways to become public, um, I think we open the door for private ways that we don't provide services to now to come in and say, I look just like this one over here. Please provide that service. And I would agree with you if you guys hadn't been taking well, well, care of these. Give us a second. We're trying to keep the discussion. Think, think of the invisible so, wall. So I think that's why I just assume table it to make sure we take the right action okay. um, in consideration of the other the other narrow private ways that we're looking at, and perhaps some of the other ones in the city. So that's a motion to table. I uh, move that we table. I second that motion. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Further discussion? All in favor of tabling time record. Aye. Aye. Oh, I did vote on What? You did vote. I, I, I didn't vote on Yes. Is anybody on a bottom line on what this whole mess is going to cost you just to go ahead and get people surveyed? Looks like it'll be over a hundred thousand dollars. That's conservative. Um, okay, Hebert Ave. No, Oahu. We didn't do Oahu. I wasn't there. Um, my only my only question about this one is whether or not um, uh, residents were there and they were supportive of it being a public way. Um, but the college was not. And I'm just curious as to whether or not our due diligence requires us to ask them what they want the status of the thing to be, since they're the abutters on all sides. Um, it was just something I was thinking about yesterday. I'm willing to move forward without doing that, but it was something I just wanted to raise. So is the college to be a better on all sides? I believe so, yeah. No, well, there are private houses on the street, but this college owns a couple of them. Mm -hmm. But I also think they own one of the, I think one of the other ones is a private way as well. Is it Bell? Bell wants not? Public okay. way. Never mind. Forget I said anything. I sort of forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think Awag is the poster, one of the poster children for uh, number one. Looks like a street. <laughs> so we need a motion. The words, if you want to use them, are we, rec we recommend that the City Council accept Awaga Avenue as a public way. But I didn't make the motion because I wasn't there. I would second it. But if it's a motion, well, we, we can't make it. You, can, you, you can't make, make that motion. motion. You have to make it. Huh. I'll make a motion. All right. Second. I'll second there. <laughs> I'll second it. Good, good. I like this. This is going go well. <laughs> You all know the street, even if you weren't there. Yeah. All right, so all in favor of recommending City Council accept Awaga Avenue as a city street? Aye. All right. Any abstentions? I abstain. Um, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Two abstentions. Sorry. Okay. Hebert Avenue. Hello. Uh, Hebert's uh, off of South Street? Yeah. Yes. And all the residents unanimously said, we do not you want to be somebody. That's right. No, they way. so don't want to be a public um, way. And they all had guns. <laughs> I was told a very interesting story about monkeys living down there <gasps> and riding dogs by one of our employees. Wow. There is, at the end of the road, what one of the residents described as a zoo. That's all, right. all I can say. I can't speak to the monkeys. There was, there was definitely lots of noises coming yeah. from there. And, yeah. and it must have mostly like chickens, but there I, were some yeah. funny noises. I, I thought it was mainly fowl, but um, 
Um, I move that the, the, that the board has evaluated uh, Herbert Street and we feel that this private way could uh, does not meet the reasonable standards to become an accepted city street. In light of this finding, we hereby uh, direct the BPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway. Further discussion? We do have a city water line down there. So at some point, we will probably look at taking a easement for that water line to ensure that we maintain and repair. There's also critical access to our flood control system down that street. So I would encourage the board that you allow me to pursue an easement for the DPW to access through Hebert Avenue our flood control system. So could you um, amend your motion, perhaps, to make it conditional upon... Okay, I'll try that. Um, before I do, does um, does the gas company's presence down there have any impact on access? I believe the gas company has a right of way okay. to the property to get to the property. Have they ever, to your knowledge, have they ever done anything? They've done some. They did some clearing down there, but I think that was mainly just to prove their own access. I don't know what they used the building for, but yeah. they are down there. Okay. And like I said, we do use it to access uh, the Mill River Diversion Channel. One of the concerns that the residents have about this become a public way is that the Office of Planning Development has been trying to do a bicycle spur to get down to the rail trail and the flood control system. This is one of the bigger reasons why they're opposing it is they don't want that level of activity happening on their road through the driveway. How long is that going through Vets Field? No, we connect right behind the uh, power plant, Smith's power plant, and they build a small bridge from what is the uh, the uh, east side of the current bridge over the river, and it would connect right to the top of the dike, which is dead level. And they would have a, so that we have a second bridge? I mean, two bridges would be like a couple hundred yards apart. It's, it would. Calling it a bridge, this would be a very short bridge, it'd be about the size of this table. It has to get across it. There's a section of concrete uh, wall, and then the earthen dike starts. We have to have to get from that bridge to it. It should fall on the same side of the river. We're not crossing the river. This was explored about eight or nine years ago by the computer engineering group, if I remember correctly, at Smith College. So you have some leverage at this point. I mean, we can we can resolve this to their satisfaction if we can get. The impression I got from talking with Mr. Guessing in particular down there is that he doesn't have a problem with the DPW coming down there, accessing flood control, and doing maintenance work along the levee system and the the diversion channel. I'm sure they'll be amenable to it, but. Um, so, but we need to get that in writing. Exactly. I mean, so it goes with the property. And we probably can craft it around, around our, most of it around our waterline easement for the most part, except for maybe a last segment that we'd have to do. So we're going to table this pending satisfactory. The right All right, I'll withdraw my motion. Well, you can do uh, Why don't I revise it to okay. uh, 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 table further action on, on Herbert Street pending? Uh, city's ability to ascertain whether or not they can have access to maintenance for our flood control system. So we're looking for written easements. Yep. Uh, all in favor of tabling, keep her down. Aye. 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 Uh, next is Maple Lane. Opposite <laughs> the convenience store in Con Street. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maplewood Shops. Yep, oh, yeah. There. Yep. So I have a motion. Okay. I move that uh, we recommend the City Council accept Maple Avenue as a public way. Second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out why we're doing it. Okay. Comments? Thoughts? I agree. Okay, all in favor of recommending that the City Council accept Maple Avenue. Aye. 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 Great. Carrie Street. 
Oh, that was the one with the gun barrel. <laughs> Gary Street was the one with the gun barrel. Yeah. yeah. That's a property thing. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Could have been a boundary. Makes a big yeah, difference, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. That was actually a very interesting street. It sure was. Where's it located? Off of Williams Street. Yeah. That, you know the Williams Grade School? Yep. Down on that next Down and Arrow. Um. I move that uh, we recommend that the city council accept Cary Street as a public way. Second. Any discussion, thoughts, comments? Ned? You good? Okay. Uh, all in favor of recommending that the city council accept Cary Street? Aye. Aye. Okay. I need to register an abstention. Okay. Yeah. BJ, one, mm -hmm. two? Yeah. Two abstentions. The ladies abstain. <laughs> I saw you riding a bicycle the other day. You look great. Thank you. I like riding a bike. I like to ride it to Turner's Falls every day. Like you need to ride to work. You could. You could. Yeah. Just take a while. Yeah. 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 Really <laughs> tired. <laughs> okay. And finally, uh, Massasoit Ave. So you've had two public hearings out on Massasoit. Mm -hmm. One was without a petition, one was with the last one with a petition. Mm -hmm. uh, two homes, private water, private sewer. Somewhat near. I believe it's paved 10 feet wide. I think it's the most near. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the oh, one it's that's off the north. north? No, that's no. new. Oh yeah. We've already voted. We've already <laughs> voted to recommend to, to recommend that this not be accepted in the past. Um, now we could also table it and put I it in the pile. I would table this one and, and consider it with the other questionable ones. Okay. All in favor of tabling Massasoit Ave. Aye. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, sole source contract for international 7600 SFA non-program options to GNS Industrial in the amount of 11200 What is a 7600? I'd be able to tell you. But we need a move. I approve. Uh, no move approval. Move, move okay. approval. I'll second that. So the international 7600 is a new 10-wheel truck that we are in the process of purchasing through the capital improvements money. Um, this is for non-program options that aren't part of the state contract price. And what it covers is a radio, a corrosion-resistant primer to the frame rails to prevent rust, extended transmission warranty for 60 months versus one year to five years. Also covers extended vehicle coverage warranty from one year to five years or 150,000 miles. It also covers full engine comprehensive plan for five years, 10,800 hours or 300,000 miles, um, or it's a one year warranty once again with whatever miles you put on in one year. And also it's called an after treatment coverage, which covers the, uh, um, the electronic systems of the engine uh, for five years, 10,800 hours or 300,000 miles. And that came, comes to be $11,240. So basically, these trucks come through with a one-year warranty. And what's happened is year three, year four, we started having some problems with them. And the city's left footing the bill. So we looked at a number of different types of warranties that we could purchase for these vehicles, three-year, five-year, seven-year. And we kind of went middle of the road. That we like to do is a five-year warranty on this vehicle. It's like you go in and buy a car and buy an extended warranty from manufacturers three years 36,000 to seven years 100,000 for your vehicle same type principle except the truck is this truck is a two hundred and seventy thousand dollar truck that we're buying this on a highway or it is it's a highway with the plow truck with a sander attached and we'll actually have a wind plow attached to it too It'll be one of the first ones in our fleet in many years does international mean Navistar? Uh, Navistar is part of it. Actually, Navistar is the parent corporation. And the comprehensive plan and the after-treatment coverage are both Navistar guarantees, which is the manufacturer of the parent company. So what portion of this 
is the cost of the truck and what portion is the... The, um, the truck is under state contract, completely different. It's about $270,000 for the truck. Was under state contract, so that went underneath just a vendor cover sheet to downtown without the board um, because that money came through capital improvements. So this is just warranty. So this is just warranty this and the radio and stuff. Well, it's a ten thousand dollar radio and and, ru and rust proofing. <laughs> <laughs> Never buy the rust proofing. Sounds like a program <laughs> option. That's the warranty. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I know. Now so I get it. Easy. I just was like confused. Yeah. Okay. Things that don't go along with the state contract that we right. can yeah. we can sole source it, but we have to have a contract to do it. Is this a practice that you guys have, have used in the past, or is this something new that you're thinking about? This is something about? new that we haven't done yet. Okay. And how, I, I suspect that you plan on operating this thing a lot longer than five years. What, what What's your sort of guess about these These large things? vehicles, the 10-wheelers, um, we're looking at probably anywhere between a 15 to 25-year year lifespan on them. How many miles might they have after five years? That's a good question. I really don't know. They're predominantly heavily used in the winter. Um, this one will have a dedicated stainless steel body in it with a sanding setup, so it won't be used to haul demolition debris, things like that. So it's really a winter style vehicle for snow and ice. Was there any uh, discussion of EPA pollution requirements? These meet all modern standards, Massachusetts mission standards. I would think. State would certainly insist on that. Yeah. And it's current. It's not, I don't, I'm not sure if it's California mission standards. I know it meets Massachusetts mission standards. All right. Call in favor of approving, uh, authorizing purchase of the extended warranty and the radio. Uh, All right. right. Uh, contract for Northampton landfill gas monitoring and facility inspections to Stantec in the amount of 18400 this is an annual contract that we have each year. Every month we have to go out and adjust the well fields and do a report to the uh, DEP of our findings. This also includes 12 monthly reports um, currently that we currently have to do. We don't think we're going to use the full use of the contract as the landfill is closing now. And the fact that we're going to construction work and it'll be regular monthly construction reports going to the state. We believe that when, once the landfill closes and during the course of the construction that those reports will cover the monthly reports so that I imagine that we'll probably see two or three reports but not 12 months from reports coming out of it. And once the landfill is closed, the requirement is, is the annual report going to the state instead of monthly reports. But we still have to do gas monitoring and just so the board knows with the agreement with Amoresco, they reimburse up to $25,000 in well-field development costs. So basically, 13, almost $14,000 of this is the gas monitoring is reimbursed back to us from Amoresco through the agreement. And has that occurred? Uh, it had last year, yes. Oh, good. Yeah. How's the whole situation with Amoresco growing? Um, it appears to be going okay. Uh, but we resolved our differences. Okay, all in favor of approving the contract for uh, landfill gas monitoring and facility inspections? Aye. Aye. Uh, next, change order number two to contract 106-11 for DPW expansion and renovation to HKT Architects in the amount of 30, it's a $35,000 credit. Second. Um, basically, upon the recommendation of Joe Cook and working with George Andrew Keyes, the previous director on this, we come to a point in the contract that we know the DPW is not going to be built in the near foreseeable future. So rather than finishing up everything we have left in the contract, which is not a lot, and then have to review it and relook at it again in two years, four years, I came from a recommendation that we close out the contract now. And with it, there's $35,390.72 that have not been expended. So basically, there's, there isn't a credit coming back to us. We're not expending any more money. This closes out the contract with HKT. Thank you. Just a, a, a status update for where we are with the possible expansion. Um, I do not know. I know that the, uh, from 
what I understand, there's quite a bit of debt service that gets retired in 2019. At that point, it might be something that's looked at, but in the foreseeable future, there's not money for it. 2019 is the fire station, um, the high school, and there's another project that's paid off of debt service. So that opens it up. Um, we're hoping we could go through with phase one, which is about a $21 million expansion at this point. To do everything we need to do, it's almost $30 million, which is uh, a lot of money, even though the enterprise funds are picking up quite a bit of it. It's just outside the, really, the city's grasp right now to deal with, unless they wanted to go through a, an override. Or um, I think they're actually just waiting now to see as the debt service retires, what they'll be able to do for us. So, all in favor of approving this change order, which will close out the contract? Aye. Aye. Uh, change order number one, the contract 306-13 to Kleinfelder for the wastewater treatment plant communications evaluation in the amount of zero. It's a, a time extension only. We're still working with Pinefield on this project. This is the communication and alarm status for all the pump stations going to the wastewater treatment plant. So we're just running behind schedule on this. We believe that this time schedule until October 1st will give us ample time to complete the contract work. Questions or comments? All in favor of extending this contract? Aye. Aye. Change order number two, the contract 273-13 for the North King Street water main construction with John Concalves and Sons in the amount of $3,000. These are direct costs incurred for two incidents that happened um, on the project. Let's see. Sure. It's actually one incident. Um, actually, it's two. The uh, first one was an unknown water surface was found that they tore off the line and they spent a few hours fixing it. That total came to $2,462.22. The other one was a hydrant extension that was not part of the bid package that they had to do, and this extension was $636. So the total of those two items done for the change order was $3,098.22. You paid out of the Water Enterprise Fund. What was that on water Something that wasn't marked on our plates, and when the contractor hooked, he ripped it out and spent a few hours repairing it. But the people who are getting that water delivered had a meter? Um, it was an old service that was hooked up with a corporation, and they tore the corporation out of the main. But no, there was no one attached to the service. Oh. What's a corporation? A corporation is the shutoff that goes inside, it goes on the main itself. So actually, you have two sets of valves, you have the curb stop at the property line, and then on the main you actually have a corporation also that you can turn on and off. Which you have to access by excavator? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, all in favor of this change order? Aye. Aye. Next, a uh, contract for catch basin frames and grates and manhole frames and covers to EJ Prescott in the amount of $16,000. This is an annual contract through the sewer and drain division that we do each year to estimate how many replacements of frames and covers and catch basins and so on that we'll do any calendar year. So this has been a standing yearly contract that we have. We had three no bids and one bidder on it um, when we solicited this. Uh, we had no bids from Auburn, Auburn Wind Water Works, Putnam Pipe Corp, Quality Water Products, and the only bidder was E.J. Prescott. Mm. Why do you think they're doing one bidder? I don't know. Mm. But we like their stuff. Or oh, they're yeah. just the truth. They're meeting our specification. Yeah. Okay. Pardon? 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 Yes. Where the jungle grew up next door, the state seemed to have piles of abandoned catch basins and such. Has anybody ever explored the possibility of getting those in surplus? I have not. They're state property. That's not a bad idea. We shall ask if you can find it now. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, next day. Oh, did we vote on that? No. no. All right. All in favor of approving the contract for catch basin frames and manhole frames? Aye. Aye. Sole source contract for water quality testing to Howard Laboratories in the amount not to exceed ten thousand dollars. This is a sole source approved by a procurement officer to go to Howard Laboratories for total call phone testing. Uh, we've been doing this on an annual basis with Howard Labs. Um, there's concerns, the reason why it's being sole source is that we've been able to verify that there are concerns with other laboratories that deal with false positives, they're called, which uh, basically Westfield actually just went through a boil order because of a false positive, and it's the same lab that we've had issues with in the past. And this is why we were able to sole source this particular contract. A little story for the, uh, I don't think anyone was on the board, but um, 15 years ago, yeah. we got a, a report that there was coliform in the water, and that really was the um, trigger for the state requiring us to build the treatment plant. And even though we were able to demonstrate, and the state acknowledged, that there were some real problems with this plant, they said privately they want it doesn't really matter we want that pl the uh, treatment plant built we think it's a good idea but the whole, the whole the what kicked that whole thing off was a, a report of California in the water false false report well it looked Question like it was ball? suspicious yeah it, it, was an, it was an anomalous reading made no sense but if you did ten readings and they're all passed that doesn't count no wow you only got to fail once yeah huh. well that's they were looking for a, Okay, so uh, have we approved that? Not yet. All in favor of approving the contract for water quality testing? Aye. Aye. <coughs> so I approve going with it. Some of the solid. Change order number one to contract 330 11 to Taven and Howard for the water conservation grant, a water audit in the amount of zero. It's time extension only. Second. Um, this is being done due to a bill that needs to get paid that came in late outside the contract limits. So we've been asked to extend our contract by um, X amount of days, uh, May 30th, uh, to be able to cover that and pay that bill. Okay. Some of the auditor's office flagged to us. All in favor of extending the contract? Aye. 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 Extend water. water for? Pardon me? Uh, they're, actually, I haven't seen the audit report yet, but, oh, excuse me, Water Conservation Grant Water Audit. So we received from DEP a Water Conservation Grant last year, and included it was a water audit. The Conservation Grant allows to place, replace, I think it was 62 toilets and urinals with local devices in the city. It was about a $62,000 grant we received. And then we did an audit after there have to be an audit after the cap, that's correct. So all in favor of extending the contract? Aye. 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 Great. Change order, no order number one to contract 85-12 with Stantec. Um, I think we missed one. Number 20. Oh, okay. Extend water quality testing contract 30-13 with Spectrum Analytical for one year um, well, until July of 2014. We'll approve. It's a five thousand dollar a year contract that we have with them. This is just a one year extension with an existing contract. For Old Shepherd Road Bridge. Can we vote on number twenty? No, twenty. We didn't vote. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking. Okay. You're really one. It's twenty one. Really? No, that looks like a good one. Okay. So. All in favor of renewing the contract with the Spectrum? And, oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, how is this different from the testing that Howard Labs does? This is all the other analyticals we have to do on the water system, not mm -hmm. total coliform. Percolate, uh, there's a whole slew of parameters out there. So, all in favor of renewing this contract for another year? Aye. 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 Now, change order number one to contract 85-12 with Stantec for the Old Shepherd Road Bridge. Time extension only. Second. 
so this is the contract we have with Stantec to evaluate what we know as Hotel Bridge in Leeds, which crosses the Mill River from Main Street to Water Street. It's the old wrought iron bridge that's currently closed near the country club. So uh, we have a uh, community preservation grant for this work, about $35,000 or so to do the work we are granted. And we're running a little bit behind in doing the actually reporting for it. So this is just a time extension to get that done. All in favor of extending this contract? Uh -huh. uh, next, I believe this is where we're going to talk about uh, the chalk art. Number 22, Ned? Uh, no. No? We're going to talk about the summer concert series in Pulaski Park. That's why Mr. Yakuza was here earlier. Oh, okay. I, I thought that was and true. then at the last minute, we had a contract that needed to get done, which is the um, biannual inspection of Hannum Brook at the landfill. It's required to be done every two years. We do this so it'll be the last time we have to do this water quality and, and stream evaluation report for the closure of the landfill. So those are two items that uh, are under 22 at this moment. Okay. So do you have... Is it true you did not reasonably anticipate these two items? They're news to me. <laughs> the <laughs> summer concert series I was aware of. I, I had it tangled up with the... Uh, what do you like? So what happened with the, the concert series, it came in too late for us to get on the agenda. It was at the last minute of the last week, and we had posted the agenda, I think, on Thursday. Mm. And this one came to my attention today, the Hampton Brook. It needs to get done. All right, so let's... Um, I can tell you about the concert series, if you like. Yes, let's do that. Uh, basically, there's one, two, three, four, five, six nights uh, that they'll be playing there on Friday nights uh, between July 12th and August 30th. Uh, there are two nights, August 2nd and August 9th, that they can't play because there's other um, people using the site that evening. So, if you remember right, this was done, I think, last time, two years ago, they had a music series in the park. Um, I went down for a couple, it was a great time. Reminded me back from the 70s to Thursday night concerts. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the reason it's kind of a rush is because of the one on the 12th. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just two yes. days. Two days from now. Yeah. And what are we what are we being asked to do? Um, allow them to use Plosky Park for the summer concert series. Uh, they're paying the fees. They they pay the fee for each night of for two hundred eighty five dollars total, yeah. and also paid for the academy electricity and fee. So everything's been paid. I make the motion that we authorize. No, it's you need to assign it. Oh, okay. I make a motion that we authorize Ned Huntley to uh, sign the, it is, it is the uh, request from the bid to for the summer conference here in Pennsylvania. I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion? Do we have free tickets? Oh, I don't know. Free concert. Yes. As many as you want to do. They probably will have the hula hoop players there if you want to join them. <laughs> Um, okay, all in favor of approving this uh, series of uses? Aye. Aye. All right. And I'll send down a text that will be all set. Okay, now um, the, the contract. So the contract is the biannual inspection of Hain and Brook by Stantec. They have historically provided this service for the past number of years for us. And their value of the contract is $4,600. Um, I wasn't able to talk to Joe Cook today, but Typically, we don't need a contract for under 5000 but he asked that the board sign a contract for this work. Is there any explanation? Yeah. I didn't talk to Joe. Questions, comments? All in favor of approving this contract? Aye. 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 I think that's all we have for that's correct. unforeseen topics. Uh, next, private ways. Um, I think we're all up to speed, right? We have a meeting on July 20th. We have seven more private ways, and that will complete all the petition private ways that we have seen so far. So I think that 
pretty much wraps up the process that we believe that we're going to be doing. So it looks like our, I said our public process is winding down at this point. I would imagine from that meeting we'll be in August and have votes for that August, August board one. meeting. And <laughs> Which Saturday is this again? 20th. 20th. The 20th. Like this one. Roughly 9 to 12. That's correct. 25 minutes at each site. Um, at what point are we going to discuss how we're going to move forward on the revisiting of early ones and the ones we just tabled? After we finish the list. Okay. Mike is working on a proposal. He's writing it right now. <laughs> so the first three that we visited that did not have petitions, only two of them come back with a petition. That was Park Avenue and Edgewood Terrace. And now Massasoit, excuse me. So there's been three that have actually come back with a petition from our first public hearings that we had. Um, so that's it on private ways? Uh, I just want to show you, I'm not going to be here on July 20th. So. You're going to miss another one? But you're going to be somewhere fun? Um, yeah, maybe. Woo-hoo! Yeah. Yeah, where are you going? Uh, Ocean Park, and then I dropped my daughter off at Logan for she could fly to France that night. See, now that's backwards. That's just, yeah. You're right. I should be going to France. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, before we go on to the next item, so I'll have to leave shortly. Yes. Um, and have we decided our meeting schedule? Oh, so, all right. So let me, um, actually, that's great. It came up. Uh, Stormwater. <coughs> um, Well, let, let me let me let me tell you this. They're this. combined. <laughs> I want to hear this, this chain, chain of logic. Oh, yeah, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The city council tomorrow night is going to meet and uh, formally receive the report for the stormwater task force. And I believe what's going to happen is they're going to create an order directing the board of public works and the department of public works to continue working on the stormwater proposal and to be ready uh, to make a more concrete proposal in the form of a um, ordinance by a uh, little after Labor Day. So we have actually some stuff to work on this summer. Now, is that going to be on a subcommittee? Is that going to be the whole board? What do we have to work on? Well, the, the Stormwater Task Force, for example, uh, proposes two potential methodologies for uh, developing the billing. Mm -hmm. That has to be resolved. Okay. Um, they have some uh, concepts that have been approved conceptually. For example, I think there ought to be credits offered to people um, so that they have some incentive to improve their stormwater practices. Mm -hmm. But there, there's no meat on the bone. Um, so somehow we have to advance things over the course of the next two months. Wow. So what I just heard was the decision about which of the two options to pursue is going to come out of this room. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I don't know that maybe that doesn't mean we need to meet more often. Um, I imagine this will be a perhaps a subset of this board. So it's July now. I don't think we have, do we have another meeting scheduled for this month. I don't think so. We don't. So that's yeah. it for this month. We have our Saturday uh, public ways mm -hmm. on the 20th. That's it. We're about the 24th. 24th is your regular meeting. I didn't cancel that. Yeah. Oh. Are you meeting on the 24th? I thought we discussed, um, correct me, I mean, I, I may oh. be incorrect. I thought I don't remember we discussed that's meeting on the 10th for July only. Yeah. And then you discussed. I believe it was the second um, second Wednesday in August. Does that, um, sound appealing? Well, I, uh, given where we are with the stormwater report and the need to keep things moving forward, I would highly recommend that we meet on the 24th to have that be the topic for, for discussion. So just have a one-topic meeting? Yeah. That would be fine with me. Then we'd really understand all the I know Chris spent a lot of time on it. Can you come to that meeting? I'll be there. I will not. It would be nice to 
really spend a lot of time, you know, like an hour at least to mm -hmm. kind of really understand everything. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's fine. I mean, Maybe. there's five weeks in July. You could push it up. <coughs> we might want to. We might want to also invite um, Dan Felton to that meeting if we can get him. Your vacation is over. Well, I'm taking my vacation. Can you think of anybody else we might want to have? Emily Ford, who was the chair of that committee. Well, he, he was more of a coordinator, like me, sort of a figure out. Uh, no, Terry, you made a, you made a very substantial <laughs> contribution to, to the process. And, uh, uh, how about, um, I guess I'll ask Rick about what you're saying. Not really, because one because his proposal is, I think, the stronger of the two, and but it's more it's considerably more complicated. Uh, once you start talking about runoff coefficients and things like that, you get to a place where you know. But he, he explained them very well the other night in a short time. Absolutely, I mean, I, but I think we'd all benefit from hearing that. I I can't I can't I can't replicate what he does on that one, and I think it would be be, be good for everybody. To that opportunity. Jim knows it. Jim does too. Yes, Jim does too. Okay, let me think about it. Can, I, can we think about that? Sure, absolutely. So, so Mike, let me ask you a question. Is there, um, if it were a different Wednesday, would that appeal to you, or are you going to encompass the weeks? Uh, it's ten days that encompasses as many Wednesdays as I could find. <laughs> <laughs> Make some plans, okay. set a timetable, okay. understand what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But then we have the 14th of the, the, as a backup. Right? Yeah, and there'll be work, there'll be interim work. Okay, okay. Right. So the 24th is going to be only about stormwater, with the exception of contracts, if they come up, a yes. little of contracts. I think that's reasonable. Yep. And no other. If the board board doesn't want to do private way recommendations from the meeting of the twentieth that night. <laughs> on the fourteenth. Mm -hmm. On the twenty-fourth. Twenty-fourth. No, I'd like to be at that meeting. Okay. Okay. If you're willing. That's fine. We can wait till the fourteenth. Um. All right. So twenty-fourth, we're going to meet, and then on August fourteenth. Um, so, does that answer your question, Mike? It certainly does. Thank you very much. So, before we move off this subject, I do have five additional uh, copies of the findings and recommendation report for those board members who would like a hard copy to read. It is on our, our website, and it's on the city website also, this report, so you can see it if you want to read it electronically. I do have copies for those who might want a hard copy to read. Uh, next is the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan. Yeah. Hey, folks. Hi. Hey, Mike. Hi. See you, Mike. Hi. Enjoy your vacation. Or whatever it is. <laughs> so currently, we are working with Planfield to set up, um, obviously, the subcommittee that was done with uh, David, Gary, and Mike on the alternative analysis, which is task number eight. So basically, we've completed tasks one through seven, which is 
looking at the system overall, um, collection, pumping, uh, treatment systems, and now we're at to a point of trying to address the needs of the future of the facilities that we have. So this report here, we have an electronic format, and I have a few hard copies here for you, um, is a development and screening of alternatives, and basically it's looking at all our deficiencies and how to correct them with different options and how to correct them from do nothing to spend a lot of money. So that's what this is about. So that, um, Klein told us recommended, and Jim and I have agreed that sometime in late July, we'll have a meeting on the treatment plant, and then in early August, we'll have a meeting with the subcommittee on the collection system. They'll probably be, they can either be two hour early morning sessions, or they can be maybe three to five or four to six o'clock night sessions on this to get this done. But I want to throw that out there that we're looking to set some dates later this month, early next month. Um, I think it'd be too much to ask the subcommittee to sit down for four to five hours to go through everything and rather break it up over a two week period of time. So I do have hard copies of it and if you want we can get you electronic copies also. As far as tasks one through seven, those that already have been distributed in either electronic format or in hard copy and they are on the city's website. Update. Um, we actually met with the um, Time Bond, our consulting engineer for the closure project, and Jake Bates and son out of Clinton Mass, the contractor, and they're looking to start the closure project sometime early next week. So mm -hmm. in the process of actually sending out notification to the Glendale Road residents and the other surrounding streets that until about mid-October, so there's be a lot of activity on that site while we try to uh, wrap up the last six and a half acres that's currently open and close it for, for good. Uh, as far as Saturday operations at the transfer station on Glendale Road, they seem to be going well. The leaf collection uh, facility, it seems to be working well. We're still got a few bugs that we're working out, but it seems to be doing okay. The residents are getting used to the hours. The, the initial complaints about trying to be open more often, more frequently during weekdays and so on, have uh, dropped off to almost nothing at this point. Um, our <clears throat> current recycling coordinator, or solid waste coordinator, um, is out of the office right now. I believe she comes back next week or so. And I believe, that, is there a reuse meeting next week? Next week, yes. This morning. And that's really about what's going on in solid waste. <coughs> the recycling reuse committee. Yes. <clears throat> Do you detect any progress on getting a spot to have a little facility? I think we've moved away from that because there doesn't seem I mean if we can't even get a DPW back, how can we get a solid waste I mean uh, reuse facility? But we're really concentrating on events and getting that going and Susan Wade is fat, fabulous. She has okay. a lot of experience, she brings a lot of experience with her. And I do think this letter that came in everybody's packet about uh, after many revisions, they're asking for the board to approve this letter uh, to send out to Northampton retailers. It's very good. It's like, yes, we already have some programs in town. This all was generated by a private firm that had a program that might be working with local retailers, but we declined to give uh, support for that. But the idea is send, asking local re retailers that, well, who knows, in the future we might pass a law saying we won't have plastic but right now we're just asking you to curtail your use of, of single-use plastic bags. And I think that the idea that it, everybody has uh, read that and has uh, any comments on it, we're all taking to the meeting on Wednesday morning, or we'll take it to the meeting on Wednesday morning. But I do think it's beneficial to send this letter out to, to retailers. To start the conversation. Them, to start the conversation. And The mayor has also been waiting for this letter to come out so right. that he can look at addressing that also. Right. He also is reluctant to try to address it to accommodate a business, but kind of globally, it's it makes global. sense that we 
say look at oh, getting away from the yeah. shoes. Yeah, and I think that the 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 concept is is that if we do have to go, that there is appetite to ask for a, a city ordinance to this this at least is the beginning, so that we know that we've addressed it with the other um, One of the things that isn't in the letter, maybe that's not the appropriate place, but a lot of businesses like Stop and Shop uh, are offering what are effectively like affinity bags that they've got their whole and stuff like that. And maybe what we might want to recommend, there'll be some there'll be some outfits that'll want to do that, but there'll be some that are just too small that we might want to see about a Northampton-wide one through maybe the Chamber of Commerce or something like they've that. They've done that. They have done one? Yeah, okay, correct. Okay, cool. Correct. But that's a good idea. Yeah. No, it's but I think we don't want, I think right now, it's just the idea of opening the subject yeah. of how to come up with some alternatives and be proactive about it. And it's, it's more courteous than the original letter was. Definitely. And I just, I think we've made some progress on it in terms of the attitude. But I think that's a good comment. It may even happen again because that other one was like two or three years ago. So we can tell them that we endorse that? Do we need to have a vote or to just take it to the committee? I haven't read it. I read it. It yeah. seemed, seemed pretty straightforward, kind of obvious. I mean, when I think about trying to help um, businesses do the right thing environmentally, I think about the recent city council, council resolutions requesting the federal government. Hopefully, yeah. We have to support this letter, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so. easy. Yeah. Oh, thanks. So I don't know, do we need to vote on it? Well, I'm just going to make a motion. And, well, and, and I think that the committee would like to know that, yeah. that we brought it forward and that yeah. you guys, you, uh, yeah. you got their backs. Yeah. So I would like to make a motion that the Board of Public Works supports the letter to Northampton retailers about avoiding the use of single-use uh, uh, plastic bags to reduce the amount of, of stuff that goes into the landfill. I will second that. Um, okay, further conversation. All in favor of endorsing this letter? Supporting this letter. I would be very clear that we're supporting their efforts and not making an endorsement of whatever activities. Isn't this us? This is okay. supporting. Okay. I mean, it, I, I don't know that it, it's Isn't not it? endorsing any action. It's just endorsing a letter. Okay. But, so I think, but we're talking about our letter yes. that you guys wrote. Yes. But the yes. mayor's going to sign. That's the second letter. Oh. Okay. But it's very similar to that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking at the, ma the mayor's letters. He's waiting to see this panel. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so did, did, you, did you write this? I uh, made some adjustments. May I make some? Of course. Okay. So I have this electronically? Uh, you do. Yes. Okay. I sent it. I so, that. So, I so you might want to make some adjustments. Okay, if I may. Of course. Okay. Just by Wednesday morning. By okay. Tuesday. Okay. By Tuesday. Pressure. <laughs> okay. I work with you. Uh, Gary, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Yeah, the uh, the thing about the uh, uh, the bridge, the Shepherd Road Bridge, reminded me that I've got people in Bay State Village asking about the Clemens Street Bridge. And I think maybe the best way to address that is to put it on the agenda, make it an agenda item. And What's the problem? Well, it's kind of old and it's wearing a lot. It was repaired set significant repairs in I think, and then it was closed again in 2008 for about a year, I think. Jim Roscoe like. said he was going to take an ordinance to the city, and which I don't know if he did or not, saying a wait limit would happen for that bridge. Yeah. When he was on this committee before we met. Well, there are wait there limits. Is wait limit. the there are wait limits. Well, no, no, he was going to have them reduced, I think. Um, the state does that. It isn't done locally. So, in a current status of Clinton Street Bridge, um, it is going under evaluation again because our rating of it went down again. Um, but it takes about a year to get the schedule, the new wait schedule out of the state. So that's underway. I've talked to the mayor about it and the reluctancy to spend anywhere between three to $500,000 to do another temporary repair on the bridge. 
when we could petition the state to put in a new bridge that they would cover at their expense and it would be a new modern two lane bridge. And then do we decide do we do something aesthetic with the Yukon Street Bridge and make it part of the aesthetic structures so it becomes part of the bridge and maybe one lane uses that part and the other lane is a just an open bridge. There's a lot of different things to discuss about it, but the fact that Clement Street Bridge is going to be a constant money drain to the city of Northampton. Uh, basically, we're, it needs the stringers to be replaced, and the cords that got fixed last time are back in that condition again because it's just an iron bridge that's rotting away. Well, one of the difficulties is that there are I mean, we've seen pictures of overweight, overweight trucks mm -hmm. going over that. And my question is whether or not we could uh, prohibit trucks from using that. You can't do a truck prohibition on a roadway without the state's permission. Okay, can we ask the state for permission to? Um, they would not grant it because of the type of vehicles that go across the bridge. They're infrequent delivery vehicles. It's not a scheduled route of regular trucks that use it. So that. Even though if you had a truck van, you couldn't stop the EPS truck or the moving van that goes there every two years to move a family around. You can't stop that activity. So, you know, we're hoping that people will, will, will obey the, the weight limits of the bridge. I expect that it's probably going to decrease the next rating. I just don't know when that's going to come out. So, I think what I was hoping for, though, is that actually have it as an agenda item so that we can talk about not just Clement Street Bridge, in my opinion, just sort of for all bridges. And if we're going to talk specifically about Clement Street Bridge, I would want to know if this bridge really has any value. So what if we just closed it? So you're proposing an agenda item? I really am proposing an agenda item because I want, I don't want the village associate, the people in Bay State to be able to come to a board meeting if they want to. And yes, the Board of Public Works talked about this particular bridge, but I think we need to touch on it in the context of all of our bridges or maybe the, the city's transportation system. And, you know, so if you look at how much money, if we were to spend $500,000 on that bridge, why would we do that? Well, what does that do for the citizens of the city? It's not just Bay State Village. And if we close the bridge, what does it do for the citizens of the city? Probably not much, except for Bay State Village. So it's kind of looking at those issues. And I think well, there's well, more than one bridge, fo right? Focus on the uh, yeah, yeah. Help us come up with this agenda. I think the agenda item is, is uh, really has to do with um, city bridges. Well, the city has a number, probably 40 plus bridges in the city. But uh, do, does the city have uh, financial responsibility to all of them? Um, what happens when the state goes out and looks at bridges and they deem that it needs to be fixed, they'll put it on the list to be fixed. Yeah. Currently, Clement Street Bridge is not on the list. They are actually working on one list right now, which is the Accelerated Bridge Program. And all the bridge funds are tied up into that until 2016. Right. After that, they'll start looking at new bridges again. So no matter what we do, there is no funding from the state for Clinton Street Bridge until at least 2017, which is about the time frame it would take to probably create a project, get it designed, and typically when we request the state for a bridge replacement, it takes about six years to get done. And my understanding is, is that if the state were to replace it, we would not have the one-lane bridge that we have. Well, that's what I remember happening in, in, 90, in the early 90s. And there was a there was a group of people in the neighborhood that wanted to keep it a one-lane bridge and because of the historic value and also it's kind of a traffic common thing. So that was a state project and the state bid to reconstruct the entire bridge, just like Hotel Bridge was done back in... I think it was in the mid 80s was the last time it was reconstructed. So it was done. The hotel bridge is off the state list at this point. Yeah. They don't even do a every other year inspection of it. It's just off the list. As far as Clint Street Bridge, the state has recommended that it be replaced right. with a modern bridge. 
They've already recommended it? Well, that's the conversations I've had with Al Stegman is that this is what the state would do, but if the city wants to invest their own money and keep rebuilding parts of it and keep it keep it open, then the city can do that. But the, the city couldn't make a decision that it would be a bridge that would only accommodate cars and pedestrians and bicycles. I, I think number one is that how are you going to enforce it, number one. Number two is... The state sets the weight restrictions on what the bridge can be used for, not the city. I mean, we went as far as the Water Street Bridge when we closed it, we left it open to pedestrians. Now we we close it to everybody now because of the hazards that are on it. So, Gary, are you hearing from the people in your neighborhood that they want a meeting about this? Yeah. Yes. yes. Could you, all right, so, I mean, so, Would you rather have the meeting through the Bay State Builders Association, or you want it done at a board meeting? I, I'm just trying to work out the logistics of the meeting. Would, would the staff have to be ready to talk about anything concrete? Is it something you imagine is they all come here, we all go there? I, I'm not trying to shut the idea down. Yeah, I'm just trying know. to. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where to go. I'm trying to help them understand what they're up against. I, I, I kind of feel like, um, you know, when the bridge was closed for over a year, there were a few people who were, you know, very unhappy with that. Mm -hmm. and I think there's a large group of people who it was a non-issue. In fact, they sort of realized that they're kind of quiet. And then we fooled around with um, the speed bump thing, and some people thought they were great, some people thought they were horrible. And uh, it just, it's, it's sort of, to me it falls into all this, um, it falls into a larger picture, this whole on, uh, concept of our, our transportation system, and, and how, how, how viable is it, how sustainable is it, uh, how many bridges do we really need, um, who does it really serve, um, and then the value of infrastructure as a historic reference point. I, you know, it's all part of the conversation. Um, I don't think it's worth spending five hundred thousand dollars every five years uh, on a city budget to preserve a historic piece of infrastructure because it's a charming piece of infrastructure that carries, I don't know, three thousand, five thousand cars. Yeah, I don't know. Half a kilometer. No. There's 3,000 cars on Riverside Drive, so I don't know what on the street to do. So could you next, next meeting maybe make a proposal for what you think? I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. hearing what you're saying, and this is the discussion that we want to happen when that budget, that agenda item occurs. Right. So you, you could think about that. I have to think about it. I can't handle yeah. it right now. Okay. I'm going to go for a bike ride. Where? Let's let's street bridge. Finish. Come on, guys. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get back on the thing. He's being sarcastic. I'm going for a bike ride on Saturday morning. I'm going to That's all right. We'll be back by noon. Okay, Chris, is there anything you got? So, really, if, if you come up with an idea, like a proposal, it seems reasonable. I'm sure the neighborhood wants to talk about it. Right. But I still think it's bigger than that. It's not just the fun street bridge. Yeah. I'm going to let you chair that someplace. meeting. About. Uh, stormwater. Um, I was down in the Cape for a bit the last couple of weeks, and in the Truro Muckleed area, and not stormwater, private ways. They have a lot of private ways, like a lot, so I could see why they had a problem. I have to say that my initial reaction to the idea that, that uh, the DPW and the BPW are going to down-select from the two options that were presented to the Joint Committee makes me very uncomfortable, if it happens without specific guidance from the City Council. Um, 
one of the things that we did when we presented two options was we were basically saying that this is an inherently political decision that's going to have an impact that should be, that sh at least in my mind, that should be made by elected officials and not appointed, appointed uh, volunteers. So I, I'm going to mull it over a little bit, and I'm probably now going to attend the city council meeting tomorrow night, but um, I, that is not the spirit in which I, I signed on to the stormwater report. Uh, with with the two options, I I strongly believe that that is an inherently political decision that's going to have political repercussions, and uh, having us take care of it, I think we're I think we could be capable of it, but I don't I don't I don't think I don't think we want it. <coughs> Chris, there's no way that they're going to look through and figure out the pros and cons of VRUs versus hydraulic acreage, and and work out the details. It's just. It, then I'm not saying they couldn't, they're very bright people, but there's no way that, that at that point in the process they should be backtracking and figuring out those details. I hear what you're saying, because it is complicated, which is why I was saying, you know, people like Dan ought to have the opportunity to, to explain some of the more complicated issues to us. Um, but, you know, we at a number of points raised the fact that, that some of these things are, are, are inherently political decisions. And I think that, that is the, that's the most critical one. And I, I guarantee you, I am not going to be comfortable um, dealing with the political fallout for whatever decision we make, because there will be. People are going to be upset about this. And um, the idea that it was done by people who were not elected, I mean, obviously, by the fact that we're appointed and, 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 and uh, approved, there is some form of, of public input into our presence here, but uh, I think this is I think this is above our pay, pay grade. I, I, I understand completely what you're saying about the technical portion of it, um, but but as I said during our discussions, politicians make decisions that are not entirely based on facts. They're based on the, the political dynamic of of the decision making process, and that's just the way it is. I totally hear what you're saying, and I agree with you, I, but I just want to understand about the process first. It seems to me that it's coming before this BPW because it's re re related to our, our um, mission, and then it's going to go to them for a political decision. And we've been through this before with the landfill. The, the board totally was against, well, the city ended up making a political decision for the landfill, which was not in complete agreement with the BPW. So they are relying, in the whole scheme of things, in terms of the process, they're looking for some professional input. Not that I'm professional, but you have put some time in. We have Jim, we have Mike, we have people that well, have put a sure. lot of time and energy into this and are doing what they have put forth some concepts that, that they think are best for our community. The worst part that can come out of this is that we can make one recommendation that the political body then completely overturns, and we just have to live with it. But until then, we have a responsibility to our city to make a decision that that is more in the technical way rather than the political way. And if the political body is going to make a political decision, I would like to think that they had some professional technical input first. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and as I said, I, I'm not, I, this is my initial reaction to it, and I, I'm, I'm going to mull it over, um, but, uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say on it. This one. City Council President thought there was an ordinance coming out of the task force. Well, I, I think that's... He was, he was misinformed yeah, on yeah, that, I, but I, the, the, the task force's report is not in a condition where the city council can begin deliberating. I would agree with that. And, and um, so the question is, how do we move it forward over the summer when everyone's attention span is, is wanting? And I, <coughs> I think this is a place where we have the energy, we've got the technical help, and we can keep moving things forward so that in the fall, the city council can pick it up and do what they will with it. I, I think I, I agree with everything you said about where the technical expertise lies, um, but but I want to go back to something you said, which is, do you think that they'll be better equipped to make that decision in the fall? Um, 
than they are now, based on the politics of it. They, they don't want two options. But why did we give them two options? Because the board was somewhat, the task force was somewhat split. Exactly. And, and they came out in the end saying, we left the ERU option on the table because it's widely used, it's easy to explain, and has some advantages along those lines, but the task force feels that the hydraulic acreage model has a lot going for it and was the stronger candidate from their opinion. We said it was a stronger candidate, but we didn't endorse it. And the reason we didn't endorse it is because, at least as I understood it, was because we thought this was a decision that needed to be made at a higher pay grade. And that um, even though the majority of people were on, and I was one of them that was on that, I mean, you know, I know what the outcome of this is going to be, and I, and I support it, but it's the process portion of it that, that makes me very uncomfortable. So um, I, I hear what Rose is saying about you know, our due diligence in moving this forward, but I also, I also think it's important to keep in mind that whatever this committee or this board or this body recommends is going to, it's going to be weighted disproportionately. And even though there, there have been times in the past where the city council has not been bound by the work that the BPW or the DPW have done, um, when you make a recommendation of that type, it, it it's hard to over it's hard to overturn it unless you unless you have a really strong reason for doing that. So it just I'm just I'm a little bit queasy. That's mm -hmm. that's all I'm saying. And I'll probably be I'm looking forward to the next meeting <laughs> so I can understand what the heck are you talking about. <laughs> All right. I wish I understood what the heck I was talking about. Well, it sounds great, though. Yeah. I'm all set. That's because you had that category number 22. Want to tell us about your vacation? Uh... No, I stayed home. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to report out a little on what the uh, Joint Committee uh, talked about the other night in terms of private ways. There's been this... Uh, this possibility of kicking around of uh, creating a ballot question to continue to uh, provide snow and ice removal from the private ways. And the uh, council decided to table that discussion because they just felt that the timing of that for the work that we were already doing and the cost benefit of everything it just didn't make sense. So mm -hmm. that has been, we're, it, that has been pulled back as an op opportunity. It's not, it's not moving forward. And we're going to stay on course with the process that we've been we've set up and moving forward. Okay. No. Yes. I'm done. I'm done. So. Motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. All in favor. Aye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>